Did you know it is impossible to hum while you hold your nose? Mm. Bet you're trying it right now. <laughs> yep, just did. Hello and welcome back to AXO Schools. Today we're doing another anatomy section, but this time we're learning about the respiratory system. The respiratory system allows you to take in the fresh air and get rid of the stale air and even talk. The major organ of your respiratory system is your lungs. Your lungs are in your chest and they are so big that they take up most of the space in there. Fun fact, you have two lungs, but they aren't the same size. The lung on the left side of your body is a bit smaller than the lung on your right. And yes, that might drive some people OCD and sick. <laughs> But remember, back to the circulatory system, we told you the heart is placed a little to the left. So it, you, uh, the lung has to be a little smaller to fit the heart in. That's right. So let's talk about all of the structures needed for respiration. We're gonna actually draw a model and label our structures so that we understand their functions. And you know, we might have a little competition our, on our end to see who can draw the best model of the respiratory system. But I'm gonna share with you a picture of what it should look like. So something along those lines. Can everybody see that pretty well? Yeah, the person who drew that yeah. had to have been an artist. Yeah, they look like pretty good. Yeah. So, it was you me. know. Oh, it was Karosh. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. I, I do it for sure. <laughs> we might add a few more labels to this, though, as well, with some of the things that we're going to draw. Very so nice. On a piece of paper, yeah. we're going to line this underneath the camera view. And then, when uh, at the end of the video, um, we might show you a few things throughout, but we're going to compare ours and you guys can rate our uh, drawings in the comments and we're going to rate our own because nice. clearly I'm going to win, right? <laughs> well, if you drew this Fine. one, then yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right. You should grab some paper and a pen and draw. <laughs> no, I didn't draw that. All right. So you're going to grab those utensils and the first thing you need to draw is a person's head with a mouth and a nose. I think the side view is easiest to draw, and it does not have to be perfect. Um, you, should, you should label the mouth and the nasal cavity like this, like you see on there. Okay, here we go. Drawing our head, mouth. Guys, I'm pretty good so far, although my lips look a little weird. Um, profiles are tough Just for me. saying. <laughs> yeah, not my strongest nice. suit. Not nice. my strongest suit. <laughs> All um, right. Yeah. So when you look at the nose and the mouth, these are two cavities, and they meet at the pharynx. We're going to draw lines from both of those areas um, two of the cavities, representing those cavities, to the pharynx. Um, so the top one represents our nasal cavity coming from the nose, and the bottom one represents the oral cavity. And these are both going to meet in the back at the pharynx, which you can see is our next kind of lump in the throat. So let's draw that, and everyone give those things a label. So make sure you label your nasal cavity. Um, as well as your mouth or oral cavity. So Danielle, I saw your mouse go across your screen and I was like, there's a bug on your screen, but you can't see a bug <laughs> if it lands on your screen because you're screen sharing. I was a little confused because I sudden my peripheral vision. <laughs> That's pretty funny. So I started out, I'm not going to lie, I started out really good here, and then I realized that my paper might be, a, my model might be a smudge too big for my paper, and then everything else is going to look really teeny tiny, <laughs> but my head's going to be massive. It's okay, I've got the opposite problem. This guy's got a very okay. small head. The next thing, uh, 
The next thing you're going to draw is the larynx. It is the voice box. It holds your vocal cords. La, 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 la. You, got... <laughs> you will draw a box underneath the lump that is the pharynx. Um, we will label the box larynx. <laughs> Good old Larry. That makes sense, larynx. Pharynx over the larynx. All right. Um, My guys, guy I might have to do like, uh, here's the front. What? I said, my guy works out. Your guy works out? Yeah, he's got muscles. Not completely. So I think what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to model. I'm going to have to put my model on my back. So like the front is going to be like my head and then all of a sudden it's going to flip over and <laughs> go down the end. Whatever uh, you got to do. Idea, maybe. <laughs> this is a self-portrait. <laughs> Does it have a lot of muscles, Karush? I don't know. Okay. Does everybody have their larynx, or is it just me, the slowpoke? Oh, no. I got my larynx. Yeah, I got my larynx a while ago. Oh, no. I was okay. finishing up drawing the rest of the body. I just <laughs> had details while I wait. Oh, my goodness. Okay. From there, we need to draw the trachea. The trachea is the tube that goes from your larynx box down the middle of your chest. It is also called the windpipe because it takes the air into our lungs. You can see it in the picture that we are sharing. It looks kind of like rings around it. This tube is reinforced by cartilage rings, which is why it looks like that. Let's draw that and make sure you label it. All right, so we know that Karosh is drawing a head and adding more and more details into his drawing. Why are you mad? <laughs> it's a competition. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm mad. <laughs> Danielle right likes now to I'm win. Just adding while I, wait. I like to win. Mandy likes to win. I mean, it's not like uh, you got no, on here with like people who are like, it. We just kind of want the experience for once. Yeah, I'd like to win. <laughs> you want to know what it feels like? Okay, uh, what was that tube called? Trachea. A trachea. And it is spelled T-R-A-C-H-E-A. T-R-A-C-H-E-A. E-A. All right, does everybody kind of have that going? Um, yep. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> All right, so you can keep drawing that trachea. Um, but I'm going to go on. So at the bottom of that trachea, there are two tubes. These tubes are called the main stem bronchi. So when there are two of them, they end in an I, and that's bronchi. When there is one of them, it ends in a U-S, and that comes from its Latin meaning. So that would be a bronchus going to the left and a bronchus going to the right. But if you're going to say two of them, they would be called bronchi. Oh. It's like the cactus thing. Yeah. With bodies. But with bodies. Karosh, can you tell us a little bit about those bronchi? Um, they, they branch out. They do bronchi thing. Well, <laughs> there are about 30,000 in every single, in each lung. Oh, well, those are the bronchioles. Oh, yeah, the smaller ones that branch from the branches. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So one of them heads to the left, and one of them heads to the right of your body, going into each lung. Uh -huh. if it, so you can reference that in the picture if you didn't follow. Very nice. Yeah, it's those two branching off um, under uh, those the are trachea wrong. there. And then they start to look like little roots almost when you get them into the lungs, huh? They do. So each main stem bronchus, which goes to one lung and the other lung, eventually branches off into tubes or bronchi that get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Kind of like the branches on a tree. Wait, do they get smaller? Yeah, they do get a little smaller. Yes, uh-huh. Just double checking. Yep. 
So let's draw and label the bronchi. Now, at this point, we should also draw and label our lungs. Make sure you make them big enough because we need to be able to see inside. Um, so we want to be able to draw all the structures in there. So make sure that they're big enough if you're doing this at home as well. Okay, so we need our bronchi and our lungs. Yes. I should have used a poster board. Uh, so you can get details in and then have a chance at destroying me. I have some regrets on uh, my choice of, of paper and uh, all, all things, really. <laughs> it's okay. I think I know his hands. hands. My hands. All right. Man, so those phalanges, the they're beautiful. <laughs> so the tiniest tubes are as those branches, those bronchi are getting smaller and smaller and smaller, are called the bronchioles. Now, Karosh, how many of those are in each lung? As I said before, there are three, uh, not 300, there are 30,000 of those in every single lung, in each lung, and they are as small as a single hair. It's crazy. That is crazy. I did not know that. Mandy, did you know that? No, I didn't know that, but I don't think my drawing is going to be to scale if that's the case. <laughs> Let's go ahead and draw some branches in our lungs and label them, label them the bronchioles. Your picture should look something like, I'm not quite ready to show mine. It should look like, uh, like, uh, like the picture we have shared. <laughs> um, so what's it called? Uh, never mind. So the, the small ones are the bronchi, uh, bronchial, and the big ones are the bronchi? Correct. Nicely done. Nice. All right, so we're going to take some time here because we're in our, you know, quick-paced artistic competition that we have going on. Guys, I'm, I'm going to say that my, mine's not looking too bad. Not okay. too shabby. Are you trying to not scare the competition? <laughs> yeah. It worked. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Got my bronchioles. All right. So let's just take a step back. Mandy said that this wasn't going to be drawn to scale. So let's say you took your lungs out of your body. Please don't do that because we want you to be able to breathe. But if you were to able to take a look at your lungs from the outside and their healthy lungs, they're going to look pink and squishy, kind of like a sponge. Crush, what happens on the inside of the lungs? Um, what's it called? What happens on the inside of the lungs? Yeah. That's where the real magic happens, right? Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Uh, at the end of each bronchial is a special area that leads to clumps of teeny tiny air sacs. And these air sacs are super important um, because they are called the alveoli. Karosh, since you know all of our stats on how many of these things we have in the body, how many of the alveoli are in our lungs? For alveoli, there are 600 million of those in your entire lungs. If you stretch them out over an entire tennis court, it, it, yeah, you could stretch them out over the over an entire tennis court is the amazing part. There, because there are so many of them that fit inside of these tiny little lungs of yours in your body. You could take all of these out, 600 million of them, and stretch them out over an entire tennis court. Now, that's a lot of alveoli, and they're really important because each alveolus, again, when we have coral, we're they're ending in an I, and when it's I, it ends in a U.S., um, but each alveolus has a mesh-like covering of very small blood vessels. Um, Karosh, do you remember what those small blood vessels from the circulatory system were called? The capillaries. That's right. The capillaries, you guys keep drawing, doing your thing. Uh, the capillaries cover 
the alveoli. Now we're not gonna draw those today, but you do need to start drawing your alveoli on the end of your bronchi to your bronchial branches to your alveoli. So start to get that oh, drawn in. That's why I was so far behind because I did that way before you guys asked me to. <laughs> oh. Sorry, did the ravioli. Just kidding. I've just been adding some uh, abs <laughs> that this guy deserves and they look Oh so my good. gosh, you would, you would. All right, so this mesh like covering are those capillaries that Karish was talking to us about. You, right, you might remember these capillaries from our video on the circulatory system um, because we did the heart and we did arteries, capillaries, and veins. Those capillaries are where they're very small. And they're so small that the blood cells have to line up in a single file line just to be able to pass through these vessels. Um, so let's draw our alveoli because they are super important. That's where all of our air goes. While you guys do that, I'm gonna go ahead and add details and make this guy look even cooler. <laughs> I'm adding some, some spice to mine as well. All right. So while you guys are working on that, let's talk about some of the external structures that interact with the respiratory system and either serve as protective mechanisms or aid in breathing. Yeah. So those are actually really important to know. Your lungs are protected by your rib cage, which is made up of 12 sets of ribs. These ribs are connected to your spine in your back and they go around your lungs to keep them safe like a cage. Absolutely. Beneath the lungs is the diaphragm. This dome-shaped muscle works with your lungs to allow you to inhale or breathe in and exhale or breathe out air. Let's draw our diaphragm on our model. Oh, All right. So that way back, way back when. Get that diaphragm drawn and labeled. Diaphragm. I went ahead and, I went ahead and uh, took the step to remove his neck and redraw it in with a more thick, stronger neck. <laughs> this guy looks so cool. <laughs> All right, so that pretty much ends our, our drawing component. Everybody put your final details. You got about 10 seconds. Ah. And then we're going to Karosha's drawing thick necks. So we're gonna kind of critique our artistry here. Wait, Five, I need one second, like an extra second. Four. No, wait, wait, wait. I'm adding one thing. Five. No, <laughs> I need this. Four. Three. Two. No, no, no. One. All right, wait, pencil's down. Gonna... Pencil's down. My pencil's definitely down. I'm not finishing up that thing. All right, let's look and see what we got here. So this is the front of my bad the front of my dude should we stop screen sharing so we can see them or keep them up yeah, oh, you, yeah sure. Mandy, you should pin her video so she's biggest on the yeah, screen let me do that let's look at danielle's first okay so yes i didn't have time to draw the other half of him right he's got some hair and a cute little nose and a mouth so we've got our oral cavity and our navel cavity going down to our pharynx our larynx and our trachea and what's cool about this guy is he had to flip over so that we could go and draw more details so we got his trachea one of the bronchus leading to the bronchioles and i didn't label those so points off for me for that Darn, um, I forgot, I was talking too much. I got the alveoli and the diaphragm muscle underneath. I actually really appreciate your drawing, Danielle. Um, as um, a person who is also in this competition, I will say that I appreciate the scale you used because my um, alveoli are very, very small. Um, so the large scale front and back, that might play as a factor into- uh, I I'm game. going to go ahead and give you the first rating. So mine is based off of like, you did amazing with the fact that yours is killed. It goes on the next page. You have everything good. So I would give you a 10 out of 10, but Danielle, 
not doing the actual work and trying to focus on the details and not labeling your thing, <laughs> seven out of 10. Oh, oh you oh. would get me. That was detrimental. Yeah, your turn. All right, my turn. Take, take first measures. Okay, be kind let's... to me. All right, um, mine takes some explanation because Pete has a personality. No, 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 you have to rate Danielle. Oh, my rating of Danielle's? <laughs> I thought she did a fabulous job. I would say that Danielle- she Forever, did... she forgot some labels. You're right, so I need to I'll be a little harsher than I usually am, I think. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go ahead and give her an 8.5. Um, because I really do appreciate the scale. You did an amazing job, and and I would still like to be your friend after this, if that's thank okay. Thank you, thank you. Yes. yes. All right. Nice. Are you guys ready for Pete? Ready. Did you pin yourself? Yep. This is Pete. Um, he likes to do push-ups, and Pete's favorite meal is ravioli. Um, so <laughs> I've got everything labeled, as you can see. Um, Pete has everything that he needs in his lungs to be functional um, while still living his life as a push-up connoisseur. So I don't know, you know, if his personality comes into play, if you want to take a look at his muscle structure and um, how, how well the things are drawn as far as um, the good. respiratory system. But like that's, that's Pete and yeah, raviolis and push-ups for days. Excellent. Okay. So I'll go ahead and give the first rating for Pete. Now, I appreciate the fact that you created a personality for this character, which neither me nor Danielle did. That will be points on. But presentation matters, and your presentation did not go over any of the educational facts. <laughs> that would be some points down. But then also, you did a really accurate drawing. So that will be some points up but you didn't do a whole body because you have more space on your page, but he's cut off. So that'll be some points down. <laughs> I think I'm going to have to give you an eight out of 10. I also am gonna give you an eight out of 10. I thought Pete was great. I love that he had a name, loved push-ups and ate ravioli um, because alveoli are kind of like ravioli, alveoli, ravioli. Uh, yeah, so I loved it. Eight, good job. Thank you, thank you. So, All right, Karosh. So now, I would like to introduce you to Carl. Okay, now there's something I'm covering in the corner, but I'll take you through the entire body. So if you see at the top, there's a the nasal cavity. Um, he has some interesting hair functions. That's just his problem. Uh, don't bother him about it. it. You have all of the labeled parts, the bronchi, uh, his abs that he worked hard for. Um, this diaphragm right there. He has uh, legs, he has extra fingers. It's pretty It's pretty useful in some scenarios. You, you'd actually be shocked how many times extra fingers comes in handy for him. Um, he also has a different sized lung on the left, a little smaller, see, because of the heart. Oh, okay. And not because I messed up early on. He has some shading in the neck, attention to detail. He has a thick neck uh, because, uh, you know, he's, he's buff. And then uh, he has some shading on the tube. And also, one reason why you can't vote no for Carl, he also he has a pet turtle. You can't oh. vote no for a pet turtle. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. Croche. Um, yeah, he also wears shoulder pads, always. He's naked right now, but he's still wearing shoulder pads. I was gonna ask about that. So that's part of Carl's just normal outfit is shoulder pads only? Yeah, but not just normal outfit. Like he's, he, he got a doctor to sew them into his skin. I know, gr disgusting, but he, he did it, not me. He, he did it, it's his yeah. choice. Uh, so yeah, he, he's naked right now, but he's wearing yeah. shoulder pads. It's like artificial deltoid muscles. Right. I don't know, Karosh. I'm going to have to go. I'm going to save my, my rating for the very end of my Remember career. turtle. I am remembering You're the turtle. rating the turtle, too. So turtles was plus up. Detail was plus up. The shading, incredible. Um, the extra fingers and the personality of Carl, even though you didn't explain his personality, I feel like I know him, and I can appreciate that. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to go with a nine. Why is everybody, why do I have to go left? Why is everybody stealing my ratings all the time? Because now everybody's going to think I'm just copying. But I was going to go with a nine as well. I love the story, the enthusiasm behind it. My favorite part was that you made the left lung 
smaller than the right lung, paying attention to the other anatomy yes, of the And that body. was not just an accident. I love it. I mean. Also, uh, so Danielle wins because we're playing golf. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Change of rules. Oh, all right. That's hilarious. <laughs> Nice. So let's talk a little bit more about our lungs now. Karoj, can you give us some intro into that? Yeah, it's easy to feel your lungs in action if you put your hands on your chest and you breathe in very deeply. <laughs> when do we breathe out? <laughs> you feel your chest getting slightly bigger. Now breathe out. <sighs> I'm dead. And you can feel it return to regular size. That's right. So now you've just actually felt the power of your lungs. Powerful. So let's talk about how the respiratory system works. Every time you inhale air, dozens of body parts work together to help get that air into and through your body without you even ever having to think about it. Well, thank goodness for that, because that would be a lot of thinking. Or would it? Because you're thinking about every step and every hand movement you take and every finger movement you make, but it's not a lot of thinking because your brain automatically does it. So if you added lungs to that mixture, it would just be like adding an extra limb. It would come naturally, even though we think it would be more thinking. That is something to think about. As you take in a deep breath, your diaphragm contracts and flattens out. This allows it to move down so that your lungs have more room to grow as they fill up with the air that you just breathed in. The, and the diaphragm isn't the only part that gives your lungs the room they need so, they, so that they can expand. Your rib muscles also lift, uh, lift the ribs up uh, and outward to give the lungs more space. Absolutely. The air goes in through your mouth or nose, past the pharynx and the larynx, and heads down your trachea or windpipe. On its way down, tiny hairs called cilia move gently to keep mucus and dirt out of the lungs. Thank goodness for cilia. I don't want that in there. The air then goes through all of those branches in your lungs. We talked about how there are 600 million ravioli alveoli in your lungs. When the air ends up in your lungs, it fills all of these alveoli. And that's what causes the lungs to get bigger. The ravioli also allows oxygen from the air to pass through your, uh, to pass into your blood. Remember, all the cells in your body need oxygen every minute of the day. Oxygen passes through the walls of each alveolus into the, capo the tiny capillaries that surround it. The oxygen enters the tiny the blood in the tiny capillaries because the blood cells are moving by one in a single file line. The oxygen hitchhikes a ride on a red on red blood cells and travels through the pulmonary veins back to the heart. Then the heart sends the oxygenated blood out to the cells in your body, and that's how you fall in love. I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> And that's actually where you see that the cardiovascular system and the respiratory system have to work together. Yes. When it's time to exhale, everything happens in reverse of what we just talked about. That's right. Now the diaphragms, now it's the diaphragm's turn to say, move out. <laughs> yep. Your diaphragm relaxes and moves back up into position pushing air out of the lungs. Your rib muscles also become more relaxed and your ribs move in again, creating a smaller space in your chest. Your blood took all of that oxygen it collected in the lungs through the blood vessels and delivered it to different places in the body. By now, your cells have used the oxygen they need and your blood is carrying all of the carbon dioxide and other wastes back to the lungs. Yeah, because now we have to get rid of all of that stuff and get it out of the body. The blood comes back through the capillaries surrounding our ravioli <laughs> and the wastes enter into the 600 million alveoli, filling them with carbon dioxide. Then, <gasps> when you blow out,
you breathe those wastes out in the reverse order of how we got our oxygen in. So go like this. And in case you can't quite recall what order that was, the air goes out through those little bronchioles to the bronchi, through the trachea, and finally out through your mouth or your nose. The air that you breathe out not only contains waste and carbon dioxide, but if you fill it, it's actually warm. I just did it. As air travels through your body, it picks up heat along the way. You can feel this heat by putting your hand in front of your mouth or nose as you breathe out. So the temperature that comes out of your mouth and nose when you breathe out is actually 98 degrees Fahrenheit. Yep, and you might also be wondering why the lungs don't get stuck with all this movement inside of the body while they fill up and empty. Well, luckily for us, our lungs are covered with two really slick special layers called pleural membranes. These membranes are separated by fluid that allows them to slide around easily while you inhale and exhale. Now it's time for some real talk. We know the lungs are important for breathing, but they're also important for talking. <laughs> Boom! Above the trachea, which is the windpipe, is the larynx. The larynx is sometimes called the voice box. <laughs> Across the voice box are two tiny ridges called vocal cords. As you can see, mine have developed very nicely. These open and close <laughs> to make sounds. When you exhale air, not hair, <laughs> but when you exhale air, because we want to keep the cilia hairs, it comes through the trachea and the larynx and reaches the vocal cords. If the vocal cords are closed and the air flows between them, the vocal cords vibrate and sound will be made. Crazy. <laughs> the amount of air you blow out from your lung determines how loud a sound can be and how long you can make this sound. This, try this. Inhale very deep and say the names uh, and say the names of family members as many as you can think of, and then exhale. How far can you get without taking your next breath? So I'll do that. Me <sighs> biscuit. B -b Dragon, D mom, dad, bubbly, moany, grandma, grandpa, my sister, uh, I, Dai, Janelle, Alia, Arya. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I can think of everybody. You got 14. And the next time you're outside, you should try shouting and see what happens. Shouting requires a lot of air, so you'll need to breathe in more frequently than you would if you were just simply talking the words with your normal voice. You should experiment with different sounds and the air it takes to make them. For example, when you giggle, I love giggle, you let out your breath in short bits. But when you burp, you let swallowed air in your stomach out in long breath. I want to mention that wasn't a real burp. <laughs> okay, okay, there's no need to mention that. <laughs> When you hiccup, up, it's because the diaphragm moves in a funny way that causes you to breathe in, a air, in, breathe in air suddenly. That air hits your vocal cords out when you're not ready and a hiccup happens. So you go, and it goes, and you go. Oh, I, I tried to like self-induce some hiccups and it just wouldn't happen for me. <laughs> Keeping your lungs healthy is really important, and the best way to keep your lungs pink and healthy is not to smoke. Smoking isn't good for any part of your body, and your lungs especially hate it. You can also show your love for your lungs by exercising. <laughs> exercising is good for, your, for every part of your body, especially for your lungs and heart. Nope, your heart. <laughs> Just joking. All in all, your lungs are amazing. They allow you to breathe, to talk to your friends, to shout at a game, sing, laugh, cry, hiccup, burp, and so much more. Giggle. Yeah. Join us it's tomorrow cool. for a fun engineering activity creating our own set of model lungs. Bye! Wait, wait, before we leave, I'd have one, I have one thing to show you. You ready? I'm going to grab my nose and I'm going to hum.
Mm, I'm definitely grabbing my nose right now. <laughs> definitely not kidding. Mm. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.